Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dwarven Tavern. I am Dr. Jeff Goins, your host for this review and we're taking a, uh, a bit of a departure from uh, the Pathfinder thing for a bit and uh, doing the Traveler thing. This is a book from John Brazer or Brazer. I don't know how it's pronounced exactly and I want to do it correctly so I'll just say it both ways. And this is a Traveler accessory called the D66 Compendium, the D66 Compendium. And this is made in conjunction with the Mongoose uh, Traveler series, although you can you can use it with any Traveler game. You could, you could literally, in reality, you could use it with any sci-fi game. You just have to use two six-sided dice to generate the 11 through 66. It's not completely, it's uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. It's that where you just roll two dice and, you know, use it like that. So, so what is this game? Don't know how much it costs. Price is not listed, but I'm sure it's not expensive. I'll have to, I'll have to double check and it'll be on the uh, description section to let you know uh, how much it costs. But what is it? Well, first of all, it's a very small book. It is only 47 pages, but much to my delight, it is packed full. So what is it? It's a compendium of tables for to to help you get ideas or it is a table of lists. So lists of what you say, you ask. Yes. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I open the book, I get to the ship names, and I want to come up with a quick ship name. And 61 is the Gazer or the Bumblebee. There are several pages of names. The Red Morgan or the Two Random Hearts or the 31 is the, the Galliant or the Dark Water. Okay, pretty cool. I like it. It also includes uh, damage to abandoned ships. There's a little, uh, little typo there. No big deal. It says abandoned when it should be abandoned because you don't abandon ship unless you're abandoning. So we'll roll that real quick. 55. The ship interior is blacked from fire. So the whole internal ship was gutted. Or 52, rolling along the center line axis. So it's just going through space. No, a barrel roll. Well, it's not actually a barrel roll, but you know what I mean. So 54, This this these dice like the 50s. The ship is emitting large quantities of radiation. This is something that you can do beforehand or you can do it on the fly. I like it as the idea for doing it on the fly because, you know, people always ask you questions right that you're not prepared for uh invariably and uh it also it has uh ships quirks it has uh random things found in a ship's hold this is this is really important because uh anytime you come up with like a like an abandoned cargo ship or something people always, they, they want to find out what's in it unless you want to spend hours beforehand looking at what it is, you know, uh, letting them search and or writing down the, the contents and they don't, they just blow it up. Oh, there's an abandoned ship. Ah, nuke it. And you're, all that work you've done, right? It's for nothing. So instead, uh, you can have random things found in a ship's hold. For instance, 26. And you have to decide which is the tens and which is the ones. A caged parrot cursing an Asian. 56 stuffed black and white beagle doll etc. And there are several different 66. Explosive tipped missiles. Young cattle held in tiny crates. A wrapped birthday present and so forth. Well, what's in the presents? Well, that would be a uh, present of an anti-telepath helmet. It was like tableception. I just rolled a table to see what was in the, the thing in a wrapped birthday present and so forth. So this has reasons for the communications, sensors, the system not working, smells on a ship, a ship's galley contents. Uh, these, these are fantastically useful if you want to not take the time to roll it down. Remember what I said about wasting all that time before and figuring out what a ship had on it? Well, this, you don't have to waste a lot of time. You can say, I, I'm going to roll two dice since we got the two dice. So, okay, so 11. There were 11 things stored on this ship's galley and you can roll them beforehand like the 61 like it has a number of Arger military rations uh, 11 times and 16 a decomposing mouse 42 uh, pink curry rice and you can say how much it is or you can roll it like four or 40 uh, kilograms of the pink curry rice and 
nine or ninety Varger military rations. So it'd be crates of military rations. And it just it just Proof. There you go. It's your game. Your contents are provided. So this book is exceedingly useful. It has moon names, comet names, objects orbiting a planet, what you can find. What can we find orbiting this planet? Well, it's a, a disabled ship wa awaiting a tow. They're like, uh, hello, we're waiting for a tow. Can you help us out or let them know down there that we're still waiting. Space station names, exotic atmospheres. Types of planetary governments. These are extremely useful tables. Extremely. Planet's main industry. 14. Mining precious metals. So perhaps it is the same concern that created the band of holes down in South America. The ones that made the Nazca Line airport. Spaceport. You chop the top of that mountain off while leaving, while leaving no debris. <laughs> Imagine that. It, spaceport bar names. Alcoholic drink names. So this dude, and we shall call him John, <laughs> because that is his name. Uh, graffiti. Mercenary company names. It goes on and on, and it's hard to believe it. It's only 40-something pages because it has, it has so much in it. I, I really like it. Now, he also did another one, and it is called... Shockingly, the D66 Compendium 2, which it's more of the same, is it? But okay, so this this first one was his obviously his first attempt. It has basic illustrations. Good stuff. I mean, it's not like uh, high school notebook sketches. It's it's decent stuff, but it's uh, it's pretty plain Jane, which is fine. It's fine. It's uh, It doesn't bother me that it's not replete with illustrations. It being a uh, first in the series, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, this one, I'm giving five axes because it's just a, it's just a beautiful and much needed thing with my science fiction games. It's made for Traveler, but you could use it for D20 Future. You could use it for Starfinder, you know, back into the Paizo thing. And or GURPS and or your uh, Palladium stuff or, or whatever, what have you. Whatever your sci-fi game, you can use this even though it's intended for Traveler for the Mongoose version. I think it's very useful. So while we are on the, the subject, I'm going to go ahead and tackle the other one as well. Now the other one, the six, the D, the D66 Compendium 2. Oh boy. This one actually has tables for character creation, additional home overviews. So when you're rolling the uh, the home, now this is for also for Mongoose's Traveler. And it's something that you could also use with other sci-fi games like, uh, like 33, Lone Survivor, self-sufficient, resilient, not social. So I rolled my own die. <laughs> 42, which is a new colony. You come from a new colony, protective of the group, hardworking and stubborn. That's what you do. Background events. Uh, let's see. 61. Surrounded by aliens. You are raised on a planet with diverse alien races. Gain either language zero or science zero. Just from being exposed to all those uh, all those aliens everywhere. And 53 is uh, space enthusiasts. You love seeing worlds beyond your own. Uh, gain either science zero or vac suit zero. So Krom is your god, Conan. In. So says the uh, father of the space enthusiast. And he is a god of space. But yeah, yeah. And it, it gives you all of these uh, additional events that are possible, like for the various classes, like the agent and the army. Let's get a good army event. 53, you get a ship share. An army buddy retires and sells ships. You gain 1d3 ship shares. So now we've established in the other book that this is very useful, these tables. So the other thing that we have to consider is uh, not whether they are useful or not, because that is already given. That is a given thing. But what we have to decide is, are the uh, are the options cool? So what I have determined, and I shall roll a few, 42, drifter events for, you know, you, if in the character creation, you have a live event, you get a pet roll on either pet table on page 70 and gain that as a pet. Increase animals handling by one level. And another event, boxcars. Well traveled, you pick up a language in your travels. Gain language one, 43, physical shape. You keep yourself in good physical shape. Increase athletics by one. So all of these events, and there are a few, there's, there's a bunch for 
there's one complete D66 table for each class, which is a fairly considerable amount of work. I'll, I'll give him that. I'm happy about that. Let's see. This was uh, authored by Dale McCoy Jr. Hats off to you, Dale. Yeah, a couple of... Uh, so this is, this is a very small, very small uh, company from the looks of it. it. had a handful of artists. Crime and the law. This is really handy. Uh, when you gain a contact, uh, it never really says what your contacts can do. Um, that I know of. I may be wrong, but this is a D66 table for what your contact can do. For instance, 21, this contact is a disease specialist, treats contractable diseases. Really handy in this day of age, and age. Or the uh, 42, this contact knows the regular schedule of bureaucrats. It makes it very, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it, very, it makes it very personalized. So what does a contact do? What does he know? What can he do? And you have to roll for it and all this stuff. Well, this tells you right off. So I really, really like this. This is a very handy, handy thing. 53, this, is, uh, this contact is a professor who has contacts in many fields. So you could either decide how many fields he knows, you can roll it, or or whatever. So uh, I'm really happy with this book. Criminal hideouts, gambling games, biometric security devices, and a body odor detector, which would probably just go haywire at a, a convention because you can spend $400 on dice, but you can't do a couple bucks for a deodorant. You gotta have priorities, man. Nose hair pattern algorithm. Sweat gland sampler. Remember the one in Alien where he went in the, the thing in the uh, Aliens movie? This can, you know, have that. Criminal hideouts. 64. Underground compound. Private facility. Decked out in comfort and weapons. Military base. Names. Prison name. And I'm just, I'm just skimming through. Exploration. Desert names. Atmosphere taints. That's a good one. This, this atmosphere is tainted with hydrogen sulfide. Large bodies of water. And it's up to you, of course, how much it is uh, tainted. Desert names. Large bodies of water. Reason why the planet is dead. Ooh. I, I love this kind of stuff. 25. The governments failed, the planet reverted to barbarism and died off. Because that's what happens when you have billions and billions of people who are not controlled by a large overseeing government. There's no organization, there's anarchy and ultimate failure, and people starve to death because there's no organized farming, agriculture, whatever. And it could be argued that if the governments were all taken away, that, that things might work, and they might, but this one didn't. There you have it, orbital bombardment, race discovered alcohol, <laughs> a prolonged ice age, global warming, cooling of planet's core, holy moly. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons that a planet, ways that a planet can die. So this, and it goes on and on for different things, reasons for a red travel zone, which, you know, red travel uh, zones are forbidden or highly discouraged, cargo exploded, why a starport is closed, science fair, entry scares security officer, <laughs> reasons why your ally cannot help you right now. I'm sorry, man, I can't, I can't do it. Why? Because I owe a debt to the mob and it needs to be paid in 24 hours, so I'm kind of busy. Or I witnessed this mugging, so I gotta fill out a police report for, you know, that takes forever, et cetera, et cetera. And ways your contact was killed, repeatedly shot, robotic malfunction, strangulated, struck by a grab vehicle under suspicious circumstances, had some dirt on a high up politician, perhaps committed suicide in prison, suicide, uh, stores on a starport, pets, this is the pets on page 70, you get a pet, a pet 53, so that could be either a, a Saraneth or a shark, American colony names, American warships, French, the Magistre, the Mistral, the Monarch, Chinese warship, Longxiang, the Guangli, and it has a nice little pronunciation guide. I speak a bit of Mandarin, so I'm pretty familiar with these, and brag, brag, brag. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool, really cool. And the Luna City names, Mars, Outer Systems names, this is fantastic, man. I just cannot, I, I actually appreciate this. I thank you guys for making this, because this is going to make things so much easier for me as a sci-fi Game Master, Varger Mail Names. I and the you know one of the most impressive things is any time I've ever come up tried to come up with a table, I usually make something that's like eighty seven thousand pages in length, and it's a table where it requires 
53 die rolls of various uh, die facets, uh, numbers, and to for them to be able to uh, take the seemingly endless supply of possibilities and narrow it down to 36, which is 6 times 6, to narrow it down to 36 choices is just, uh, that's, that's quite an achievement. Quite an achievement, and I appreciate that. So this one is 87 pages long. It is the Compendium 2. It also gets five axes because it's just a thing of beauty. And nothing makes me happier than when somebody says, would you like to review my stuff? And I say, yeah, and I don't know them. And it could be an awful, awful thing. And when it's not, I just, uh, it tickles me completely. Like if, uh, if I had this book and somebody else had a feather, we'd both be tickled. Quarantine. It's the uh, reason why starports closed. We're closed. Why? Because there's a planet-wide holiday that requires no one uses technology. Wow. So you can wait in orbit for 24 hours or you can go somewhere else. So again, this is the Compendium 1 and 2 for use with the uh, Traveler game, but it can be used now. Now this one is more proprietary, so yeah, this would better, be better off because it's got a lot of stuff that is very Traveler specific, like the character creation stuff. But it also has other tables that are that would be useful for other sci-fi games too. And as we all know, being able to use it for uh, cross-platform for various other game systems makes it more useful to everybody. So if Traveler's not your game and you play a lot of uh, a lot of D20 Future or a lot of uh, Starfinder, uh, this this can also be useful. So that's that's an awesome thing. And it's from John Brazer or Brazer. Forgive me, John. I'm trying to get it right. Uh, JohnBrazer.com and uh, check the check this guy out. Check this guy's <laughs> out for this five axes, both titles. So on that happy note, and I'm very happy about this. I am Dr. Jeff Goins. On behalf of the entire cast and crew of the Dwarven Tavern, I am wishing you to want for nothing but adventure. And at first I feared it, then I charged. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.